Hey, this is Mr. Leach with Simpson Math, and today we are going to be working in GeoGebra. In today's video, we are going to be setting up a document in GeoGebra that looks pretty similar to this. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the co-functions, sine and cosine, followed by additional videos about tangent and cotangent and secant and cosecant. This document has the unit circle. From that, it's calculating the trig ratios and as we move alpha around, those trig ratios update live along with points that get graphed live. We're going to use this to better understand these trig functions. So let's start with a blank document. Here I have a blank GeoGebra document. When given the option, select Algebra. You can download GeoGebra from GeoGebra.org. The link is in the description below. Here I'm running the desktop version of the software. You can also run it directly from the website or on a tablet. To set up this document, let's twirl down this option so that way we can see some of our graphic shortcuts. I'm going to center this graph a little bit. You can zoom in using the scroll wheel or two finger zoom. We're zooming into a window from negative one to one on both the X and Y axis. Right click on one of the axes and pick graphics. Under these axes options, I'm going to bold the axes and bold the labels. They're just going to make it a little bit easier for you to see. Let's start by creating two sliders. Select slider, and let's click in the upper left-hand corner. And I'm going to name this one Radius. This program is case sensitive, so note whether you capitalize that or not. And I'm going to have my radius go from 0 to 5 in increments of 0.1. Let's say OK. And there we have it. There's our radius at 1. Let's add another slider just below it. Click. And this time, this is going to be an angle. And it's angle alpha from 0 to 360 with increments of 1 degree. And that's already good to go. So just press OK. And there's our, our alpha. We'll be using both of these sliders throughout the lesson today. So let's set up our unit circle. From the circle menu, select the downward arrow and select circle with center and radius. Hover over the origin. You know that you're all over both axes and on the origin because both of them should be seen when your cursor is hovering over that. Click. Don't click and drag because if you click and drag you won't get an option to input the exact radius. So here I'm just going to type in exactly radius. By me entering in radius it's going to match up from what we typed in with our slider. Let's say OK. And test this. So let's move our radius, let's increase our radius and decrease our radius. And you see that that moves with the slider. If you want it to be a little bit more finite, you could change the increments, but we're not needing it to be that finite. So I'm just leaving it at that current setting. So let's leave this at radius one. That's, what, that's part of what makes this unit circle the unit circle. We have a radius of one. Now we need to construct a triangle. This triangle is going to be using this alpha. We're going to be using angle with given size. As you can tell from the picture, I need a segment and an angle. And from that, it will produce the third point, completing the angle. So first, I need a starter segment. So let's add a point over here at 1, 0. That adds in point B. It always adds these points in alphabetical order. So let's go to our, our tool, angle with given segment. Click on point B. Click on point A. Then it asks you, well, what angle? Well, the angle that I want is actually going to be alpha. So delete what's there. Come over here to the symbol and select alpha. In mathematics, counterclockwise is the positive direction. So let's select counterclockwise. So as we can see, we have this angle 45 which matches up with this angle here. And as I move my slider up and down, that angle changes, as does this point B prime. I don't care so much about point B, so I'm going to hide that. But this point A and B prime and my angle, I want to make them a little bit more visible. So I'm going to select point A. I'm going to color it just to be black and a little bit bigger dot. Same thing with B prime. That's what the apostrophe means, it's B prime. I'm going to have this be blue, and again, be bigger. I'm going to select this angle measurement. Do notice that 
our slider is alpha, but this is labeled beta. What it did is in order for it to create that second angle, it's using the, our measurement of alpha, but the angle itself is beta. This is the way the program has to work. Just for our purposes, it's the same thing. So if I refer to the angle or this alpha, I'm meaning alpha or beta in this case. With the angle graphic, I need some additional options. So I need to right click on it. You can right click on it over here on the algebra pane or in the graphics pane itself. Select object properties. When this comes up, I can slide this over just a little bit so that way I can see what I'm doing. Let's increase the opacity up to 25%. I can just see that a little bit better that way. Select style and let's increase its size up to 50. That makes that just to be a little bit bigger. Just to help communicate a little bit clearer, I'm going to pick decoration. I'm going to add an arrow so that it's showing that it's coming from the x-axis in that positive direction. Close this window. Now I need to draw my radius from A to B. So let's select segment. Click on A to B. Here it's labels it, it labels it F. I don't want it labeled. I do want a little bit thicker and blue to match that blue point. So as I change alpha, notice the angle changes and B prime moves around with that attached radius. I can also, as I change radius, notice that segment from A to B prime also changes with it. Now I need a point that goes from B perpendicularly down to the X axis. There is a perpendicular line tool, but it's not the cleanest option that we can use. So I'm gonna teach you something that we're gonna be using quite often in this series of videos. So select point. We're gonna add a point, so just click to add a point. I intentionally added it above and to the right of B. Let's change this point to orange, just so that way we can see it a little bit clearer. Now, I'm gonna double click on point C over here on the algebra pane. I'm going to go over to the X value, delete out what might be there. So I see C equals open parenthesis, my blinking cursor, and then comma. Where the X value would be, I'm gonna type in X of B prime. So to do that, it's X, open parentheses, B, the apostrophe for the prime, and close parentheses, and hit enter. You know it did it correctly when C is now directly above B prime. What that means is it's using the X value of B prime. So as I move the angle around, what happens to C? It has the exact same X value as B prime. Now to finish this off, so that way this point is on the x-axis. I'm going to double click on it again. This time it opens it up under a redefine pane because it already has like a definition of sorts instead of just some numbers. And this time I just need my y value to be zero always. So say OK. And now whenever I move alpha around, c is always on the x-axis. So all that I need to do is I'm going to take a line segment. I'm actually going to go ahead and color it orange and move it from B prime to C. To do that, I click on B prime and then I click on C. You could drag, but I like the click and click. To me, it's a little bit easier that way because I know that I'm placing it on B prime and then on C. So again, just to test it to make sure that it's working correctly, let's move that around. Lastly, let's add a segment. I'm going to color this one red from A to C. Later on in this document, we're going to be naming some functions, f of x, g of x, so forth. And we can't have both segments and functions named that same thing. So I'm actually going to go ahead and redefine these segments to just be a, b, and c. So to do that, let's right click, pick rename. Instead of f, I'm going to rename it a. Same thing with g. Same thing with h. Notice that my circle was also labeled C, so we just labeled my circle now C sub 1. That's not that big of a deal. When I did change those labels, it also made them labeled in the graph again. I'm just going to turn those off. All right, then I'm just going to show you and then undo just to help prove to you that this is indeed a right angle. I'm going to select the angle tool and click on B prime and then C and then B. And you to see that this, in fact, is a right triangle. So what's important about this being a right triangle is you might have you might remember back from geometry when you learned just quote right triangle trig. These trig functions come from these right triangles. It's imperative that when we do trigonometry, we're talking about these right triangles. So this is our right triangle. 
I'm going to undo that 90 degree because if I move alpha to the second quadrant, notice it turns this into the 270 degree, which is this direction. So I'm just going to undo that because we don't need to see that. Now, one thing that happens with GeoGebra is that this orange line and this red line are lengths. Because of that, they aren't negative. So if I move this into the second quadrant, this red line, I want it to be negative. I want it to be a negative 0.5 but it's not, it's just 0.5. But look what is a negative 0.5. My B prime is. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using the X value of B prime and then the Y value of B prime. So I have these B and C here. This really is just for looks to help us see that this is in fact a right triangle. So the way that these trig functions work, we have an input, which is the angle. And then the output is a ratio based off of the sides of these right triangles. Sign it specifically, it's the input our angle, our outputting ratio is the relationship between the y value over the radius. So to do that, I'm going to be using the y value of b prime and then our radius right here. So I'm going to click down on input. If I just start typing in sign, and the abbreviation for sign is S-I-N, notice GeoGebra knows sign, so it's like, oh, I know that function. Like I said earlier, GeoGebra is case sensitive. So if I actually type in capital S-I-N in all caps, it doesn't know what that is. It only knows lowercase S-I-N. Just because I think it's nice, I'm not actually going to spell out sign all the way as S-I-N-E. So I'm going to define in all caps S-I-N-E or sign to be the, ra the ratio of the Y value over the radius. So to do that, I'm going to do Y of B prime. So Y, open parentheses, capital B prime, close your parentheses, divided by the radius. Notice whenever you type in radius and B prime, it pops to blue. That's GeoGebra's way of telling you, ooh, I know what that is. So press enter. And so here it calculated sine for us. So just under our number category, sine is 0.77 when alpha is 50 degrees. So let's change our alpha. And notice, when alpha is 110 degrees, sine is 0.94. When alpha is 224 degrees, sine is negative 0.69. Those numbers seem to be pretty nice, just two decimal spots. But it's, they're not necessarily always that nice. So let's go up to options. It's off my screen just a bit, but select options, and then rounding, and then let's select five decimal places. The purpose for doing this is that the outputs for most of these trig functions are irrational. And so, though these numbers would go on forever and ever and ever, never stopping, never repeating, when you see a number that is five decimal places long in this program, it's likely to be irrational. Not guaranteed, but likely that it's irrational. Versus if you see a number that terminates like let's say 0.5 or 1, then you know most likely that's actually that rational number 0.5. Notice now that our angle is now in the third quadrant and so sine is negative because we're using the y value of this b prime which is negative so that negative divided by the positive 1 is also a negative. One more thing I want to point out, if we change the radius, notice what happens. What is changing and what is not changing as the radius changes? Is B prime changing? Yep, you bet. The radius cha is changing, obviously. Is sine changing? No, sine does not change as the radius changes. Sine is the ratio between the Y value over this radius. That ratio is the exact same value regardless of the radius because it's all independent upon this angle because the actually input of this function is the angle 224 degrees the output is this ratio which is the same as I increase the radius we just have similar triangles with similar ratios just a few more things to do our x-axis our inputs for these trig functions are angles so the input needs to be an angle Personally, I like my inputs to be radians. I could have turned my alpha to be radians here on this slider, 
the way GeoGebra works, it would round the radians. Here at 45 degrees, instead of seeing pi fourths on the slider, you would see 0.785398, which doesn't really make too much sense to me. I know what pi fourths means. I don't really recognize those decimal values all that much. So that's why we're going to be working with degrees in the picture, but then our x-axis is going to actually be radians. When graphing trig functions, I like working in radians because it's a much more manageable scale. The key points that we identify using our special right triangles have easy radian values, and significant change happens in these functions at the quadrantals, which are key points along the radian scale. Let's right-click on the axis, select Object Properties. This time it didn't pop up what I need, but right here we're under Preferences Graphics. Select X-axis. Under Label, select Alpha. Under Unit, select Pi. As you can see, our X-axis is now talking about Alpha, but I don't see any tick marks here. So select Distance, and drop down, and select Pi Halves. Sorry, Pi Halves, this is going to be a labeled tick. Select the tick mark option to also have little tick marks halfway between zero and pi halves, so that'd be pi fourths. You can input like pi fourths here, but when it does pi fourths, it rounds it, which to me is a little weird, so I'm just going to leave it at pi halves. All right, one last thing. Let's add a point. It's labeled D, I'm fine with that. And I'll also leave the orange color as well. So let's double click on D. Let's again start by deleting out what's in the X value. I like doing the X and then doing the Y. To me, the program behaves a little bit better that way. So the X value of the sine function is just alpha. So let's select alpha and then press enter. And you notice that D changed here. D is now A comma some decimal. So as I change alpha around, notice it moves in response to alpha. Now this might feel a little bit weird to you because our alpha is in degrees, but our x value is in radians, but GeoGebra is doing that conversion for us. So notice at 90, d is over pi halves. Now secondly, we need to change the y value. The output for the sine function is what we have labeled here as sine. So I'm going to double click on d. Instead of the y value, I'm just going to type in, in all caps, S-I-N-E, which we've defined to be this, to be the ratio of the y value of B prime divided by the radius, and say OK. So now as I move alpha, D moves as well. So there you have it. So this document is set up and ready to be used in the next video. In the next video, we'll be talking about the co-functions, sine and cosine, and how this works graphically. How from this unit circle do we get this value? See you then.